Hi friends, this is a 60 year old lady with a faculitic glaucoma. She has persistent raised intraocular pressure and severe inflammation for the last few days. Uh, she is treated with IOP lowering medications and topical steroids for two days and then she is being posted for surgery. On the day of the surgery, she receives 350 ml of IV mannitol about 30 minutes prior to the surgery. The surgery is being performed under topical anesthesia. The visibility is not great and as soon as I puncture the anticapsule, the fluid cortex leaks out. Well, the challenge is really with the management of the free-floating nucleus. The bag is quite loose and the posterior capsule is, appears to be quite floppy. Uh, under the cover of OVD, the rixus is eventually completed and it seems to be of a decent size. While performing rixus, I could sense that the zonules are not very healthy. As I'm trying to chop the nucleus, I can see these lines in the posterior capsule. Looks it's wrinkled or there are any of these stress lines. Anyway, I do realize that the nucleus manipulation is inducing significant stress on the posterior capsule and also the bag. It is not looking very safe for me right now and at this point I decide to change my strategy and go ahead with the IOL scaffold technique which was described by Dr. Amar Agarwal for uh, emulsifying the nucleus in the presence of a PC tear. The nucleus is mobilized into the antechamber and is manipulated to one side of it so that I can see well enough to implant the intraocular lens into the bag. I am using dispersive OVD over the nucleus to protect the endothelium and a cohesive OVD under the nucleus to form the capsular bag. A single piece in lens is implanted into the bag. I am careful to see that both the proximal and the distal haptics have gone into the bag. And now I am mobilizing the nucleus back into the capsular bag over the intraocular lens. I begin my chopping of the nucleus and I realize that it's going to be quite tricky because the nucleus is just very mobile. Well, eventually the nucleus was divided into smaller pieces and then each of them is then being emulsified. The plane of emulsification is slightly anterior than what I would have liked 
but the situation is such that it demands this approach. The second hemineucleus is then divided and emulsified. The rexus is slightly eccentric than what I would have liked it to be as the case is completed. At the hind side, I think I should have put a CTR into the bag at this stage uh, to provide some amount of equatorial stability to it. But during surgery at that moment, I thought the bag was too thin and flimsy for me to put in a CTR. I was probably worried about causing trauma to the post capsule trying to put in the CTR there's a reason why I abandoned that plan but the hand side I think it would have been better off if I'd used a CTR nevertheless the case was done and this is the first day a post-op appearance and as expected there is quite a lot of inflammation after a couple of days the inflammation settles down the pressures are also under control and eventually the patient did well. That's it. Thank you for watching and hope this helps.